good evening and welcome to another Power BI tips and tricks uh, video. Tonight we're going to be looking at how you can be able to utilize parameters in Power BI. And the whole goal of this video is how can you be able to change your connection string from one environment to the next without having to go through a lot of uh, changes with your report. So if you look at it from real world perspective, usually you have a development environment and then you have your QA environment or your testing environment and then from there on you have your production now the data that exists between all those three environments may be very different and you have your QA people that are very intimate with their data they know exactly what they are looking for and you may also not have access to the production environment so when you're developing reports or when you're given the task of developing some power bi reports um, you're given access to uh, your development environment and then now once everything is said and done you do need to have ability to change that connection string uh, so that you can move things to the production environment for your end user consumption so it, it can be daunting because you don't want to go back and change those connections so power bi actually gives us access and ability for us to be able to do that very easily and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and do a connection to my data set and you see something very different. I'm going to be connecting to my Azure environment here. And you see here on this specific window or this specific screen here, I can only be able to specify my SQL server as well as all the server, not in that case it can be any other connection, as well as the database which is optional. But it does not really give me ability to define whether that's development whether that's QA or production so we're going to make a few changes uh, so that uh, to the environment so that we can be able to do that so I'm going to go ahead and cancel here and then options and then in my options we have this query editor here uh, so you see my mouse there so I'm going to go ahead and click on query editor and then at the very bottom we have the parameters and you can see that it's, it says allow all this allow parameterization in the data source so it's allowing you to parameterize that connection string that you have for your data source so i'm going to go ahead and by default it's checked it's it's unchecked so i'm going to go ahead and check it and then go ahead and do okay and then now if i go back and do a connection to my uh, azure sql environment you'll notice one thing here now i have the ability to define whether it's um text or if it's parameter and we're going to go ahead and create that as a parameter and we're going to call this here uh, our data source and then you can define uh, what kind of data type it is or any suggested values in my case I'm just going to leave that as default and then define my uh, environment and then I'm going to come here and change this as well to catalog and let me also actually jump over here and show you guys what I'm connecting to. So this is the SQL server that I'm actually connecting to. As you can see, I have defined three different environments. So we have the development, the QA, and the production. Uh, that's what I'm going to be flipping on. And the data that we have between all those three environments is very different uh, because in real world, that's how it's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And I am actually going to specify uh, my data source my database here now I'm gonna create a new parameter and we're gonna call this catalog the American way and that one there actually needs to be dev analytics and then we're gonna go ahead and do a connection so this is gonna bring the data that I have in my dev catalog uh, so for that, I'm going to go ahead and check that guy and I want to bring in all these different tables that I have here. And for now, I don't care about the firewall rules. That's what's coming from my Azure environment. I'm going to go ahead and load that data. It's not a big data set, so it should be completing here in a very short duration. So 
so if I jump over to my relationships you guys are actually seeing that I've already predefined relationships for that environment and when you're developing your environment most of the times you're gonna have either relationships defined or not uh, but for ease of use it's always good to have those relationship defined so let's go back here and we have our data on our left on our right hand side here so let's go ahead and create some visualization with this data and the first thing that I'm gonna bring in here is um, just for the sake of the data gets to show how much revenue we made so we have our fact table as well as some dimensions and I'm gonna change that to a card uh, because I want to see how much revenue do we actually have um, in this environment uh, and you want to also kind of define your time series so I'm not gonna go into details on how to do your time series in this video but that's something that we can actually visit Go ahead and create some visualizations here so I'm gonna jump into my region and I'm gonna do a region by name and then we're gonna go ahead and do revenue and I'm gonna change that into a chart and it's always good to sort your your charts it makes it easier for your end users to consume the data so I'm gonna have that guy there and then we also have so that's showing me the regions that we have uh, North Europe Africa Central and so forth and so on depending on how you have your data defined uh, then the next thing that I'm gonna come define here is by our sales managers and we want to see how our sales managers are actually faring uh, from the revenue that they're bringing in and I'm gonna just move that guy there and this is just this is just normal power bi stuff so i'm gonna make that as a funnel that way we can see how those guys stack up to each other and of course we're gonna sort by revenue and then the other thing that i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna do by series so i'm gonna bring in my calendar month and before i do that uh, it's always ideal to sort your months so i'm gonna sort that by calendar month and then I'll drop that guy into my chart so that it looks right and then based on our revenue and let's make that chart that way we can see how we're doing uh, from month to month and then I also want to throw in one more thing here I want to see uh, from regions perspective where is our sales coming from so I'm gonna throw in Esri and the good thing about Power BI is that it can be able to detect where these regions are so I'm gonna go ahead and define that guy and I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger uh, so we see where those regions are and then I'm gonna also bring in my revenue there uh, that way we can define it by size and uh, that's we wanna define it here so revenue so we can see it by size and we can go and make this all pretty and stuff uh, making sure uh, let's say for instance if color saturation we want to define how the color looks so you can see there I have a pretty simple dashboard to build and all this is coming from my development environment so same thing I can be able to uh, sort my data uh, based on the clicks uh, I can see how we're doing where most of our revenue is coming from uh, it's North America of course uh, with the Esri maps it's gonna automatically scroll for you and you can see how it's stacking up from month to month so with the visualization that we've created here so my next major piece here is to now move it to the next environment and the way you do that is I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to my home button and then under edit queries I have this edit parameter here so that will not be lit up if you don't have parameter defined so I'm gonna click on that guy and I've already given now this file to whoever is responsible to deploy it to the next environment and I'm gonna change my database here you can see there I can define the name I'm gonna come here and define my QA and note the numbers there we have about 1.5k and go ahead and apply changes so it's gonna go ahead and do the evaluation again um, and create the model behind it and uh, of course you have to make sure as I mentioned earlier that 
uh, your schema looks the same or your schema is the same. So you see my number there dropped from 1.5 to 1.47. Uh, and the same thing if I go ahead and move this now to our prod. Uh, and I think we have it called NPRD. Let me make sure. It's PRD. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply these changes. So our number moved up there from 1.5 to 1.47 and now we are now in production data we are at 2.4 um, 2.42. So you can see there it's it's very easy once you define the parameters for you to be able to move the content from one environment to the next um, at a very ideal and easy way and after that um, all they need to do is now to be able to publish it to whichever environment that you need to publish. All right, hopefully this is helpful for someone and thank you so much for joining us and looking forward to you in the next video.